Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about Oregon and how everything is going right up in Eugene right now and it doesn't seem like it's slowing down anytime soon. So I would get used to Oregon being at the very top of college football, I'll just put it that way. But let's get back into some talking points around the Big Ten heading into fall camp and into the season and there's a ton of them. We broke down four yesterday and I kind of want to get into another four today and Maybe we'll do another for tomorrow because there are a couple that popped into my head as I was doing this that I really like to cover. So we'll kind of work through this talking point segment over the next couple of weeks as we get through the Power Four conferences. But let's jump in here. And the first question I have is about Penn State. And it's really a very simple question. Is Penn State ready to turn that corner? And uh, I've talked about this on here a lot where the 12 team playoff benefits a ton of different teams. I think Tennessee is on that list. I think Missouri is on that list. I think LSU is on that list. Penn State might be at the very top of that list because when you look at the past, I don't know, eight, 10 seasons of Penn State, you'll find 10 and 2 a lot of times. Um, that has kind of been the Penn State season uh, of the last, you know, little bit since James Franklin has taken over. And that's obviously not ideal because in the past it's kept you out of the playoff. It's kept you out of most Big Ten championships and it's just not been a very fun time. Um, you've kind of a Groundhog Day situation out there in Penn State, but uh, they have a chance to turn the corner this year. Obviously, they are a team that if they go 10-2 and against the schedule that they're playing, they're in the uh, playoff. I feel very confident about that. I can say that with no hesitation, but it doesn't change that that adds some pressure. Um, once you get into the playoff, people want to see playoff wins. That's the reality of this sport. You know, you have some teams like Oklahoma's been there four times, never gotten a win. That is a thing that their fans hate and that their fans really want to rectify this year or the next couple of years. So obviously, it's going to be an incredible thing to watch, kind of, can they turn that corner? Can they become the team that has always really been there, um, but they just haven't had those couple other inches we talked about it with Oregon that last five or ten percent to get to that elite level is really hard to get and Penn State has been fighting to get it for quite some time so the big thing here obviously is the change in coordinators Tom Allen and Andy Kotelnicki coming in might be the two most important people in the Big Ten or at least among that group there's that's for sure I think these two guys can turn this season on its head particularly Andy Kotelnicki because whatever he him and Drew Aller do together will define this season for Penn State. They're going to play good defense. There's almost no question about that. They have some really, really good players all across their defense, and although they did lose some big-time players, Abdul Carter is going to be an absolute game wrecker. I think A.J. Harris coming over from UGA was a huge pickup for that back end. They're going to be more than fine. I have very few questions about Tom Allen and that defense. Andy Kotelnicki can open up this team. He can make this team a title contender. They can win the Big Ten. They can go to the playoff. They can make some noise because that's how good this team is. The problem is there's been a couple of games over the past couple of years where they've just looked flat. Uh, whether it was Drew Aller against Ohio State and Michigan just getting absolutely shut down a year ago and looking really bad, to be totally honest with you. Um, this is a team that can win this conference. This is a team that really isn't that far off from winning this conference. They need a couple of things to go their way, particularly on the offensive side of the ball. But if all of that happens, if Drew Aller and Andy Kotelnicki is a marriage that works out just beautifully, this is a really interesting team. And this is a team that has a lot of things in place. And Drew Aller is someone that can really just be the biggest domino player in all of college football if he hits the way that He's definitely capable of. We saw flashes last year, but now it's time to really show up the entirety of the year. So it'll be really interesting to watch that unfold. But the other one I want to talk about is Nebraska stepping back into the spotlight this year because um, it feels like this is the moment in Lincoln. You brought in Dylan Riola, the savior of the program, as he is being dubbed out there. He, it's one of the most historic brands in college football. They want to be back in the forefront. They want to be in the spotlight. They want to be a team that everyone's talking about. And they have a really good shot to do it this year. They are going to be favored in every single game up until week nine when they play Ohio State. That Colorado game is obviously going to be tough, one that they did not look all that good in a, a year ago and got, I don't want to say blown out because that scoreboard was a little bit different than what happened on the field, but regardless, did not go the way that they wanted it to. And both teams have made great steps forward this upcoming year. It's going to be in Lincoln, which is a huge win for them. So it'll be fascinating to watch, but... If they win that game, they're likely 8-0 walking into that Ohio State game. And then 
things get really interesting. You know, uh, they don't necessarily have to win that game. If they play it tough, I think they're still very much in this conversation of this is a different Nebraska team. There's no two ways about that. So I think it's going to be really, really fascinating to watch this team unfold because this is a team that can totally just turn over college football this year. I think a lot of people have kind of shrugged off uh, Nebraska for quite some time, but they have an opening this year to do something really special. They can win 10 games, uh, truly. If they go 2-1 and one in those Iowa, USC, Wisconsin, if they go 2-1 and one in those three games, 10-2 and two is very much on the table, which means the playoff is very much on the table. So while all of that sounds crazy because of what uh, Nebraska has been the last you know decade or so, or even more than a decade, frankly, but this is a team that is ready to kind of make that splash, to take that step forward, to get themselves back into the forefront of college football, and it's shaping up for them pretty well, um, that's for sure. It'll be very, very fascinating to watch this team, and it'll be fascinating to watch that guy right there. Dylan Maiola is one of the most important people that has come through Nebraska football in a very long time. There is a lot on his shoulders, and if he answers the bell, this team gets really interesting, and his story becomes just that much more incredible. So it'll be awesome to watch this team, one of the teams that I'm most excited to watch unfold over this next year. But next, I want to get to a team that is heading in the wrong direction. Uh, USC, what is happening? Um, I know that sounds a little bit crazy, and uh, I, I know that I might be overreacting just a little bit, but this recruiting cycle has been terrible. There's really no other way to put it for USC. Justice Terry, Isaiah Gibson, Hilton Stubbs, Anquan Fagans, Jet White, all were committed, now decommitted. All of those guys were hugely important, all on the defensive side of the ball, where you need to be recruiting at a high level. I understand losing Justice Terry. I understand losing Isaiah Gibson. Those guys... You're right in Georgia. You're going to be fighting those teams. That's going to be a hard fight to win against uh, Kirby Smart. Hilton Stubbs is one that you could be able to win. I, I get Miami's doing an incredible job in recruiting right now. You should be able to beat them out, just plain period. I, I don't care where that guy lives. I'm going to be totally honest. And also, I, I saw a segment that was done by Josh Pate a couple of days ago talking about USC, and he said something that I thought was really interesting, talking about the people behind the scenes, and we talked about this earlier with Oregon, alignment is maybe the most important thing to a college football team being successful. If everyone is not pulling in the same direction, you're really screwed. I'll just be totally honest with you. It's what happened at Texas for so long where there was you know, a couple of people pulling in one direction against a head coach, a couple of people pulling another direction towards a head coach. You're never going to be successful that way. And it seems like that's what's happening at USC, and that should never be the case. We talked about it earlier. NIL and Transfer Portal came into this sport. USC might have been at the very top of the list as the teams of, oh, they're going to take full advantage of this, especially with Lincoln Riley as their head coach. They're going to be the team that really makes their way up over the next couple of years. It hasn't happened yet. They made some... Uh, you know, they made waves when Caleb Williams was there for the first year. They almost got to, or they got to a Pac-12 championship and ended up losing to Utah. They've done some things. They need to be better than this. Um, going forward, they just have to be recruiting at a higher level. They have to be able to flex their muscles a little bit more. You are USC. You're in LA. You are one of the biggest brands in the sport, and you're one of the most fun brands in the sport. When you are good, there are celebrities coming out. There's so much pageantry around that program, and they're leaving a lot of it on the table because of some things that are just out of control for Lincoln Riley. Um, and that's very upsetting because, frankly, Lincoln Riley's doing pretty much all the right things. Uh, all the things he's saying are the right things. The staff hires, the energy around that program, the recruiting, at least efforts of the recruiting, are much better than they were a couple of years ago at USC the last lever just has to be flipped, and that is NIL, that is alignment, that is getting everyone on the same page and pulling in the same direction, and if you don't do it soon, Oregon might be just way too far ahead to catch. So USC is kind of on a ticking clock right now where it doesn't necessarily have to be they totally have to blow everyone out of the water the rest of the recruiting cycle and have a fantastic year this year, but they got to show us something. They got to show us a, a heartbeat. They got to show us that they know that they're USC and that they know that they have a little bit more power to utilize some of the NIL and transfer portal opportunities that some other schools just don't. Um, so 
I'm not necessarily selling USC. I'm not necessarily selling Lincoln Riley by any means. I do think he's a very fantastic coach and likely will get some things figured out there. But some of this stuff is just out of his hands. Uh, if the people behind the scenes, if the people paying, uh, writing the checks, frankly, if those people are not on board, it's really hard to be successful. That's just the plain honest truth. So it'll be fascinating to watch that unfold because USC is up against it. That's for sure. Um, and then finally, I want to talk about Iowa and the reinvention that is going on in Iowa right now. And I worry that it's not going to be as big of a reinvention as we want because um, it's got to be a different offense. It just has to be. And it, it not only does it have to be, you know, tinkered with, it needs to be an entirely different offense. The offense that they're running in Iowa is, you know, I, I respect the hustle. I, I got to be honest, I really do love the three yards and a cloud of smoke uh, way that they're going about business. It's not winning football. That, that's just the reality. So Tim Lester coming in from the NFL, bringing kind of that NFL style offense, I think is going to be a huge benefit to them because, it does give them the ability to still lean on the run, to still be Iowa and be who they are, but also play with the passing game a little bit more, play with some motions and some different things. And that's really the big thing that was zeroed in on uh, this offseason was Tim Lester coming in, more motion is going to be used way more often. Uh, Iowa was very, very low on the motion uh, moniker of how many times you use motion per, uh, per game. And most of the teams that had elite offenses we're very, very high on that list. That's kind of the the new thing in college football is the guys that perfect motions, the guys that perfect pre-snap uh, movements and things of that nature tend to have the best offenses. Uh, so it's going to be really interesting to watch this unfold because Kirk Ferentz has been doing things the same way for a very long time. He has not budged as everything has happened around him with Ohio State and LSU and Oklahoma all putting up just ridiculous numbers offensively. He doesn't care. He's going to play his game. So there is a little bit of a worry on my end that how much of this offense is really Tim Lester's? How much is he really just handing over the reins to him and letting him go to work? Because I think if he does, this could be a relatively potent offense. And if it is a potent offense, the defense is going to take care of itself. And they can be in that Big Ten conversation to win that uh, title. And if they pull that off, then things get really interesting very fast. But overall, there is still a worry for me. You know, how much is it going to change? How much is this Tim Lester's offense? How much is this Kirk Ferentz offense? And we'll find out on week one and week two. And uh, we'll see how this kind of new experiment, I suppose, around uh, Iowa heads. But Tim Lester is one of the most important guys in that conference and definitely will be someone that has a ton to say about what Iowa is this upcoming year. But let's take our third break here. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of the best weeks in the 2024 season. I have three weeks in particular that I want to zero in on. Maybe we'll do another one, honestly, because there are a couple other weeks that it was splitting hairs. I'll just be totally honest. So we'll break down that right after this. So stick with us.